I'm here to settle the beef. Guys, as you know, I've been a good boy lately. No, no fights, just vegetarian, no beef. Until recently, I got in a little bit of a Twitter fight with the world's richest gambler, a man who supposedly made $360 million gambling and has nothing better to do than go back and forth with me. So I'm here to settle it today once and for all because I admit I started off a little heated. I called him a dirtbag for making you know, basically his fortune off the backs of his viewers because he promoted to them gambling. And he didn't like that. He, he came back at me with both gloves off. He said, I thought he, meaning I, was a credible source until I read this trash. Referring to something I had just written. Um, and to that, I, I just have to stop it right there and say, you used to think I was credible. Now, unfortunately for him, this is the biggest cope I hear all the time. I used to think CoffeeZilla was credible, but then... He talked about me. <laughs> now, actually, one recent hit video came out by a guy called CoffeeZilla, who I actually kind of respected and thought had a brain, but whatever. I loved CoffeeZilla. <laughs> and then he talked about my thing. We hear it all the time, okay? Let's continue, though. Let's continue. Let's not hold it against him. He thinks I glamorize gambling. Now I know where he gets his news from. He also says, this guy clearly doesn't watch, nor has he ever watched me. Everything he's saying is the opposite of who I am, what I do. Now. What is this in reference to, okay? Well, it's a recent revelation that Trainwrecks made. If you don't know, he's one of the biggest uh, gambling streamers before Twitch banned gambling recently. And just two days ago, their policy change went into effect, meaning stakes number one employee, Trainwrecks, he just got released from contract, right? He's no longer employed by them because he can't really promote them. Uh, and because of that, he decided that, I guess, he's gonna come clean and just say, you know, what he made. I'll release what I got paid since the beginning of my contract. I've been paid $360 million for 16 months of gambling. There you go. Wow. Every time I've heard that, and I've played that clip multiple times, it's still always a shocking amount of money. $360 million in 16 months promoting stake.com. Now, we'll talk in a second about whether this number is real. It's been a lot of talk. A lot of people don't think it's possible that this number is real, even for the numbers we've heard on stake.com, which people get paid millions a month um, to promote gambling on there. It's excessive even for that. But we'll talk about that in a second. The point is I responded to that by saying, because he posted this clip or somebody posted this clip of him saying this. I said, what a crazy thing to brag about getting paid 360 million to gamble. Trainwrecks only got paid that because he converted viewers into losers for the casino what a dirt bag. I then say it isn't complicated. Gambling's addictive. It has the highest rate of any addiction and that people like train glamorize degenerate gambling. And this is where I lost my spotless reputation with train. Okay. Because according to him, he doesn't glamorize gambling. He calls himself, <clears throat> and I quote, the anti gambling gambler. I'm not kidding. <laughs> And if you could tell me what that is, if you could tell me how you can be an anti-gambling gambler, professionally gambling for millions of dollars, 16 hours a day, you let me know, okay? But I do wanna take him seriously for a second. That's actually why I'm making this video. Is it true that you can uh, not glamorize gambling while making hundreds of millions of dollars? Is that true? I wanted to kind of think about that for a second because my initial thought was, you know, there are probably better and worse ways to do it, but you're always going to be the least dirty of the dirt bags, if that makes sense. It's never really a, you're never gonna, never gonna feel good about it. But I wanted to go over, you know, the full case. I wanted to go over why Trainwreck TV calls himself the anti-gambling gambler. Because in some ways, it is true that unlike other streamers who used fake money, he claimed he used real money. Unlike other streamers who highlighted only their wins, Trainwreck would highlight his losses, or I think it's Trainwreck. Do not gamble, idiots. You understand, if you watch the entire context of all my gambling over 15 months, you will see it is 99.8% fucking losing. You might say that, okay, that's positive. You know, I, I can acknowledge that what Steve will do it was doing on Rubet was probably worse than what Train was doing on Stay because Steve will do it was just kind of faking everything. However, do you know who actually made more money for the casinos at the end of the day? despite all the claims of being like this, like woke anti-gambling gambler, train by a long shot. He is one of the top gambling streamers getting paid the most for his gambling content. And we all know why that is. These business deals don't happen from nowhere. They don't just make up the numbers. Oh, you get 50 million, you get 5 million, you get 1 million. They're based on getting people in the door. 
you get paid because you get people to play. You can shuffle the numbers around, whatever, but you'll never get, your deal will get canceled if you're not pulling in the numbers. That's just the bottom line, okay? So the very fact that he says that I made $360 million, if that's true, he at least pulled in $360 million for the casino. That's basically that admission. And that's why I'm saying, wow, what, what a scumbag, right? So this is where I think as a streamer, no matter how based you are, you know, like trains, you know, he puts in the top right hand corner of his stream, like don't gamble, you'll lose. And then the other 95% of the sc like screen is him gambling. Um, I think no matter how much you do that, gambling 16 hours a day, you can't help but glamorize it. Why? Well, because the opposite of glamorizing something is being realistic, right? That's obvious. And showing the reality of gambling would be train would gamble for about 10 seconds, spending $1,000 a spin and run out of money. Instead, he gets to gamble 16 hours a day or eight hours a day, whatever he does for an entire 16 months. And he makes money, makes millions of dollars, right? That is a glamorous picture of gambling. No matter how much you you preach about, oh, guys, I'm just doing it and making millions. I don't want you to do it. Oh, please don't, don't gamble, don't gamble. So no matter how much he talks about his losses, it can only be so real when he shows up the next day and gambles again. Now, I also wanna quickly address the other side of this argument of personal accountability. So shouldn't people who gamble because they watch train wreck streams uh, be accountable themselves. And yeah, to some extent, I think you should be. On the other hand, I only think you should take accountability when these streamers take accountability because there's a whole other side to this. As much as people like Train want to say that uh, the problem is no one wants to take responsibility for their own actions, he's the one who doesn't take responsibility for his own actions. He wants to be seen as some woke anti-gambling gambler, but also get to reap the rewards of promoting gambling and getting tons of people to gamble. He's unwilling to just own the fact that he made a casino probably over $360 million. Like if people can be accountable for losing their life savings, why can't you be accountable for what you did? Here's the deal. They have no problem taking accountability when it comes to taking their cut of the check, right? Like when State goes to him and goes, hey, here's your 20 million for the month for all these people you signed up. Trainwreck doesn't go, whoa, 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 that wasn't me. That was their personal accountability. No, nah, he's like, yeah, I did a, I promoted that. I got these guys in the door. You pay me my money. And fair enough, he did get them in the door. But as soon as it's, as soon as he gets the slightest amount of social pushback and people are like, wow, that's actually pretty scummy that you do that for money. He's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're accusing me of glamorizing gambling. It's like, yeah, you're paid to do that. You did a great job of it. Why, why can't he take personal accountability for that? That's sort of my whole problem with this is like people want it only on one side. They want the guy who gambled to take personal accountability, but the guy who got him in the door, he, no problem over here. No, we have to ignore this guy, right? <laughs> That's sort of my problem with this whole thing. I, I think Train tries to, you know, um, dismiss this fact by saying that he really doesn't make stake.com that much money. This guy he calls into question the whole claim of 360 million. He says 22.5 million per month. I call cap. Ain't no way he generates that much value per month. Train responds, I don't. They lose money on me. It's how I can gamble as a anti-gambling gambler. Now, I, I don't know if he's like willfully delusional here or he's just lying. It's, it's straightforward business, guys. If, if you believe this, it's ridiculous. No business is going to offer you a deal if they are going to get a bad ROI. They're either expecting long-term profits or short-term profits. There's no other way they're going to pay you, okay? This is ridiculous. He's trying to pretend like he's the he's like got in the matrix underneath and like is secretly subverting stake.com and running them at a negative. No shot. He's making them millions of dollars a month and he's getting paid for that because that's how this works. If he wasn't bringing in more money than he was making, they would have cut the deal off yesterday. Now, I do want to say though, this isn't to say that this $360 million number is accurate. And uh, I agree that this seems outrageous, although it could be real, a real number without being accurate. Uh, this could be the amount like he got after you factor in the amount he lost back to stake. Like they could have factored in that he was gonna gamble roughly 200, 300 million of it over the lifetime of that contract. So we really don't know how much that breaks down, how much he was bringing home. But I think it's fair to say that he made a fortune 
off the backs of his viewers who gambled away a fortune uh, while watching him. But anyways, I just wanted to show the hypocrisy of this whole like woke anti-gambling gambler thing where you can have it both ways of like, oh, you're making millions of dollars <laughs> getting people to gamble. But also I'm like the good guy though. I'm like the good one. I'm the good, good guy getting them in the door. Either way, you're getting people like hooked, right? That's the whole purpose of this whole thing. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Personal accountability runs both ways. If if you can say that someone's responsible for, for walking in the door, I can say you're a scumbag for showing them the door. Anyways, yeah, that's it. That's the beef. Bye.